The next step is to calibrate the transmitter itself. The transmitter is a smart transmitter using the heart protocol, so we need a heart communicator to do so. The heart protocol is a digital signal superimposed on top of the standard analog 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So in order to allow communications, we need this 250 ohm resistor in series. To establish communications, we turn on the communicator, move it down to the online, and hit the right arrow button, and you'll see a little heart pop up in the top right hand corner. All the information inside the transmitter is populated into the communicator. We can see it's a 3051 transmitter with a tag of LT430. We get some basic information that's inside the caliber transmitter right now. The process variable, PV, analog output, the lower range value, and the upper range value. This is the calibrated range. If I stay on the device setup and move over to the right, and come down to basic setup and move over to the right. You can see the tag LT430. I'm going to change it to PT101. PT101 is already in there. I just need to set it to the transmitter. If I back out of there and come back to the main screen, I can now change the calibrated range. It's set up for zero inches of water at its lower range value to 250 inches of water for its upper range value. All I need to do is move over to the right, go down to upper range value, move over to the right again. The next step is to send the calibration changes that we made with the communicator to the transmitter by hitting the send button. Make sure the loop's in manual. It's not that important right now because we're doing a bench calibration. Hit OK. It's all done. It says you can put the loop back in automatic. Hit OK. Now if I back out, you can see that the lower range value is 0, the upper range value is 100, and the tag is PT101. If I back out again, and then reestablish communication by hitting right on online. We can test our calibration. All the information that we need is in the transmitter. The tag's correct, the lower range and the upper range values are correct. After completing the calibration, we need to test it by running the pressure up and down scale inside the transmitter and taking a look to see what the analog output is. To do that, we're going to use a high precision regulator here and the Fluke 744 documenting process calibrator to see what the pressure is and to see what the output from the transmitter is. By turning the regulator to the right, you can see that the pressure is starting to increase. Maybe we'll go a little tighter on the Fluke to see the pressure increase. We usually go up scale by 10% increments. So if I dial this up to 10 inches of water, that'll represent 10% of the 0 to 100 inch water range. It's not too critical to get it perfect because an inch of water is a very small pressure unit. Close enough. We have 9.96 inches of water and 5.59 milliamps. If I dial it up to 20%, 20 inches of water, See that we've got twenty-eight 
20.04 inches of water and 7.23 milliamps. We would continue doing this all the way upscale until we reached 100%. Record all the values and then start working downscale. Thirty percent we have about eight point eight milliamps. As you can see, when you reach 100%, the transmitter output should be 20 milliamps if everything's done correctly. At this point, we would start to go downscale by 10% increments as well. The reason being is to show whether there's any hysteresis in the device or not. That concludes video portion of number five, Rosemount Smart Transmitter. My name is Chris McCulley with Lamp Technology.